and this is a fact of the matter, we were really not sure after John flew whether or not there were critters, living critters, out there somewhere. I have the fireflies. Sometimes the stuff of life is absolutely everywhere. Comets, the outer solar system, the cold, dark, near vacuum between the stars are all loaded with uh, complex organic molecules, the very sort that you would uh, want to have for the origin of life. We see uh, forming planetary systems everywhere. We know that uh, the evolutionary process is nothing unique to the Earth. I'm the vast majority of scientists and technologists continue to regard all this as complete nonsense. They may acknowledge that a strange phenomenon exists but they think that it is not any more worthy of a high priority study now than it was 23 years ago when the National Academy of Sciences and the University of Colorado released the Condon Report, and I'm old enough to remember. So never has the situation been so clearly polarized, never has it been harder to do good research. As a scientist, I've come to the conclusion that a genuine UFO phenomenon exists, it is physical, and it is unexplained. Skeptics do not want a serious inquiry on the subject because it would disturb their rational universe. And many advocates of ufology are equally opposed to a serious inquiry because it might show the UFO phenomenon as far more complex, stimulating, awesome, and ultimately important and mysterious than the specific limited version they are presenting today. As Dr. Heineck himself said in October 1976, quote, I have come to support less and less the idea that UFOs are nuts and bolts spacecraft from other worlds. There are just too many things going against this theory. I think we must begin to re-examine the evidence. We must begin to look closer to home. Yet, Alan died without being able to convince his colleagues in astronomy to take a closer look at the data. In recent correspondence, De Vaucouleur, one of the great contemporary cosmologists and now a member of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, wrote to me that he was still unconvinced. He felt that UFO reports simply showed what peculiar things human consciousness could do. In so saying, he was only expressing the common scientific consensus on the topic. The truth is that the technological community in general is indifferent to the UFO question. In my observations, official science is not uniformly set against this kind of speculation. The real debate about the phenomenon doesn't have to do with whether or not the phenomenon exists. What scientists question is the ability of modern science to deal with it. In my conversations with my colleagues in technology, that's really what, what comes across. They agree that there is something out there that's, not, that's very poorly explained or not explained. In many of those cases, in a surprising number of those cases, if they could come forward with their observations, you would find that these people have themselves observed a number of things. In private conversations with Professor Condon in 1967, I heard him express a similar view. He told me that a study of UFOs was a waste of time, not because the problem didn't exist, but because he thought it was outside the realm of science. I disagree with this view because, as a French astronomer once said, no problem is scientific or unscientific by nature, but only by the way in which it is approached. The challenge here is to construct a rational, testable way to approach a UFO phenomenon. These unidentified flying objects that appear to display unique characteristics, such as their speed, their rapid maneuvering and so on, must be studied in the interest of mankind. If that there is undoubtedly something or a number of things, they may be quite different things too, uh, in our atmosphere, which is physical and were it to land could be seen and touched and photographed. You see on the pictures in space are things we're used to seeing here in the control center down here in Houston. 
uh, their ordinary events that surround the spaceship, pieces coming off, uh, water dumps, pieces of ice, insulation, just little pieces, 10, maybe 20 feet away from the camera. There's been no movement in these pictures. That, that would seem unusual. Unusual or, or unlike any aircraft that we use. Not real, out of the realm of aircraft power, you're exactly right. Even there is, I think, no question that there is extraterrestrial life elsewhere in the universe, that they would come here, that they would come here with running lights, <laughs> and that they would come here with running lights that I can't tell from the other lights that I have running around the, in the uh, world, I find that highly improbable. There were so many unknowns in the early days, and this is a fact of the matter, we were really not sure after John flew whether or not there were critters, living critters, out there somewhere. He was in a mess with trying to determine what the hell the fireflies were that Glenn had seen. He wasn't in the right attitude in the spacecraft, and he was had not gone through the checklist required to get ready for retrofire. I think I'm going to have to go to fly-by-wire and use the window and the scope. <laughs> and perfect under control. What's wrong? I'm here. <laughs> And uh, that was Scott. I understand the report came from Hawaii that it was a tired and confused astronaut. <laughs> if my opinion is worth anything to you, this is not true. I will admit to being preoccupied. It was uncanny luck that he survived. And he's goddamn lucky that it didn't come down bass backwards, because it could have. Somebody was looking out for him. I didn't uh, realize that people thought I was lucky to make it through. I really did, never felt that it had been that tight. But that's the sort of thing you, you have to face whenever you do new things, things that have never been done before. There are a lot of different uh, uh, masters to serve. I was uh, listening to uh, another drummer where my interest in uh, science was concerned in okay. how large is the hole in the window if you could tell me and also is this something that happens regularly on space flights and also if they were up there longer could this be something significant to have that in the window uh, let's see to start out uh, it, it looks like the diameter of the crater is about a sixteenth of an inch it's very difficult to judge the depth, but uh, based on experience of previous uh, experiences, we expect it to be about a 32nd of an inch deep. Uh, and like I say, the, uh, the, the little radial things that you can see coming from it, it's not a crack in the window, it's probably just material that has been plated onto the glass, and that is four to six inches in diameter uh, across that uh, ejecta. Uh, has it happened in the past? Yes, we have had uh, other uh, micrometeorite events. Does not happen very often. Uh, I, I know of at least one other on a flight that I worked where we, where we had a, it was identified later as a fleck of paint uh, that impacted a window and then, then the post-flight analysis, there was enough material left in the crater that uh, they could determine that it was uh, it was paint. Uh, the, of course, the length of time you stay on orbit uh, uh, increases the probability that you might have a micrometeorite uh, uh, strike, but it does not happen very often. Stephanie, anything else? Yes, I do actually. Um, can you explain also how can something, how small do you think this micrometeorite was? You, is it a fleck? And how does it create such damage? Uh, it is very, very tiny, uh, probably along the lines of maybe uh, two diameters of a grain of sand, maybe not even that big. And the way it causes damage is that it's going at extremely high velocities with respect to the uh, orbiter. And that, what you, the picture you see is is typical of, of a hypervelocity impact of a small object on a flat surface. 
And have you seen anyone, have you, is this one of the bigger or the smaller uh, micrometeor holes you've seen? Uh, it is, uh, just based on my experience of seeing other photos, it is the most significant one. Thought it comes right off. 